Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 8.1, Dividing Fractions and Whole Numbers. Our essential question is how do you divide a whole number by a fraction and a fraction by a whole number? Go ahead and turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 8.1. Now I'm starting off with this model to show you because I think it's a great model. The model says 2 divided by 1 third. So they place down two holes and then they put 1 third pieces to equal the two holes. So once you divide these two holes up into only thirds, how many 1 third pieces would you have? You'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So two holes divided by 1 third is 6 1 thirds because six times one third is two holes. So as you can see, there's a multiplication problem that you can do through division. And so that's how we'll be checking our work today. All right, let's get started. Now let's look at the number line for number two. So today we're gonna to use two strategies using fraction bars and number lines. And for number two, a uh, number line is already provided for you. So let's look and see what they've done. The question says, two holes divided by one fourth. So we made a number line and we marked it off with zero, one hole, and two holes. And then we just made little notches between the zero and the one to signify one fourth because we have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and one hole is four fourths. So when we went on to two holes, we have one and one fourth, one and two fourths, which is one and a half, one and three fourths, two holes. So the question says two divided by one fourth. So really we're saying how many one fourths do you have? And if you look, you can see we have one, two fourths, that's two of them, three fourths, this is four fourths, so so far we have four one fourths, five one fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, and eight fourths. So how many one-fourths do we have for two holes? We have eight one-fourths. So two holes divided by one-fourth is eight because eight times one-fourth is two. Remember with our multiplication unit we did? Eight times one-fourth, you do your whole number times your numerator, which is eight over four, and that can be turned into two holes. Now let's look at number three because it's the other type we're doing today. We're doing what if you divide a fraction by a whole number, okay? A fraction by a whole number. So in this model, we put down a one hole just to show what one fourth looks like against a one hole. But really we're focusing on this portion right here. So we know one fourth is less than one hole. So when I look at my one fourth, I know I have to divide it into two parts. So what two fraction pieces would fit directly below my one-fourth piece? All right, I would be able to fit two of my one-eighth pieces. So one-fourth, if you divide it into two parts, you could be able to fit one-eighth. Because one-eighth times two equals one-fourth. Do you see that? One-eighth times two has the same value as one-fourth. Now I like to think about um, this as this word problem. Pretend that you had one-fourth of a pizza left on the tray, so you only have one-fourth left, and you wanna have, share it with you and your best friend, so there's two of you that are sharing it. So if I cut this in half, I'm dividing it by two parts, do you see that right there, divided by two, How, what's the value that each person would receive? Well, I know that this is the value of 1 8th because if I were to continue this through and make eight parts, okay, this is the value of 1 8th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's the value of 1 8th. So for number four, the directions say draw a number line or use fraction strips. Now because you do not have fraction strips at your house, I went ahead and provided the model for you, just so you can see. Now if you wanna to try to draw this model, just to have a better understanding, that's fine too. All right, so for number four, we have one whole divided by one fifth. So you're gonna use only one fifth pieces. How many one fifth pieces equal one whole? So you just lay them side by side until it equals one whole. 
And how many one-fifth pieces do you see here? You should write down five. So one divided by one-fifth equals five. That's like saying how many one-fifth parts are in one whole. If you have one whole candy bar and five people are sharing it, okay, you want to give each person one-fifth. So one whole divided into one-fifth parts, each person can get one-fifth because there's five people. So the rule is anytime you divide a whole number by a fraction, you're going to get a whole number. Because five times one-fifth equals one. Look right here. Five times my numerator is five-fifths, and five-fifths equals one whole. So this would be five-fifths. Let's look at number five. Do you see how we're dividing a fraction by a whole number? Anytime you divide a fraction by a whole number, you're going to get a fraction. All right, I know it might seem confusing, but I'll walk you through and talk about why. All right, so for number five, it says divide and draw a number line or use fraction strips. So I'm going to go ahead and use fraction strips for this one. And I went ahead and laid down one six. There's my one six. Divide it into three parts. So how many parts do we divide our one six into? Three parts, because we're dividing it by three. But we want to know what would be the value of each one of these parts. All right. Now if you think about this, didn't we just cut this one six into thirds? We did, because we divided it into th three parts, and each one would be the value of one third. So really this is like saying one six times one third. And in our multiplication unit, you learned you multiply your numerator times your numerator, your denominator times your denominator, and the value will be one eighteenth. So as you can see, each one of these would be the value of 1 18th. All right, so 1 18th times 3 equals 1 6. All right, because 1 times 3 is 3, 3 over 18. And can't 3 18ths be simplified to 1 6? It absolutely can. All right, so we would say 1 6 divided by 3 has a value of 1 18th. Now for number 9, I went ahead and made a number line for this. So what I want to do is I want to... All right, let's move down to number 9. For number 9, it says 5 divided by 1 fourth equals... The direction says to draw a number line or use fraction strips. I chose to use a number line. Now I went ahead and drew my number line, and if you'd like to do this along with me, you can, or you can just watch how I do it. But I went ahead and made different notches to signify the different values of the whole numbers. So I'm going to go ahead at the very beginning and write zero, because we want to start our number line at zero. And then I made one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes, and five holes. Now because my question says divide by one-fourth, I went ahead and made intervals within my whole numbers to show one-fourth. For example, one-fourth, two-fourths, e which equals a half, three-fourths, and then four-fourths. And we all know four-fourths equals one whole. So I want to go ahead and write four-fourths directly below my one whole. And again, I know that this would be five-fourths, Six fourths, which equals one and a half, seven fourths, and eight fourths. So I know eight fourths would be two holes. And as I continue my number line, I would have nine fourths, ten fourths, eleven fourths, twelve fourths. And if I kept that going, we'd have thirteen fourths, fourteen fourths, fifteen fourths, sixteen fourths. And we know sixteen fourths is equivalent to four holes because we know four goes into sixteen four whole times. And now let's do our last one. We have 17 fourths, 18 fourths, 19 fourths, and 20 fourths. Now let's look what our question asks. It says 5 divided by 1 fourth. So we want to know how many 1 fourth pieces are in 5 holes. So if you look at my number line, we counted them up. 4 fourths, 8 fourths, 12 fourths, 16 fourths, 20 fourths. So I can therefore say 5 divided by 1 fourth equals 
20. And remember, a whole number divided by a fraction will equal a whole number because it's telling us how many parts of one-fourth can fit inside five holes. So we would say the value would be 20. And of course, we can check this with multiplication. 20 times one-fourth should equal five. That's the inverse operation. 20, I'll put that over one because that means 20, times one-fourth equals 20 fourths. And we know that that's improper. Let's go ahead and change that to a whole number. If you'd like to see this with models, you can see that I created five holes right there. And now I'm going to divide each of those five holes into one-fourth parts. So can you see my one-fourth parts? So all I have to do now is just count those up. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, one-fourth parts. And that also proves it if you'd like to draw models. Okay, let's go down to our problem-solving questions. Number 10 says, Amy can run one-tenth of a mile per minute. How many minutes will it take her to run three miles? So for this one, I think I'd like to make a number line to show this one. I'm going to make one line. Will you do this one with me? And let's go ahead and talk about what we know. She's running three miles, okay? So let's start out with zero, that's her starting point. One mile, two miles, three miles. Now here's what we know. We know that she could run one-tenth of a mile per minute. So we need to take this one mile and divide it into tenths. And that'll show that she spent one-tenth of a mile per minute so let's go ahead and take this and divide into tenths. Now remember, one whole is going to be ten tenths. So we have one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and here's my ten tenths. Now I'm not going to label all these because we just know that that's nine tenths, and here's ten tenths. So if I know this is ten tenths, I would have to know that two holes would be twenty tenths, and three holes would be thirty tenths tenths. And that shows three whole miles. Now remember, she can run one tenth of a mile per minute. So each one of these is going to be one minute. So we have ten minutes, how many minutes, and how many minutes. You would have to say it would be thirty minutes. Because three miles divided by one tenth equals thirty. We proved it right here, 10 tenths, 20 tenths, 30 tenths. So we have 30 groups of 1 tenth. And our way to check it with multiplication would be 30 times 1 tenth. You're just working backwards here. 30 times 1 tenth should equal 3 holes. Let's check. 30 times 1, you multiply your numerator, would be 30 over 10. And we know 30 over 10 has a value of 3 holes. So that's why we know we are correct when we say that it would take her 30 minutes. All right, and let's look at number 11. It says Jeremy has 3 yards of ribbon. So I went ahead and put down 3 fraction bars to use for wrapping gifts. He cut the ribbon into pieces that are 1 fourth yard long. So look right here. I took my one hole and made 1 fourth 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths to show one hole because 4 fourths equals one hole. How many pieces of ribbon does Jeremy have? Go ahead and press pause now and I want you to write down your answer and we'll check it together. Okay, for this one you should have said 3 holes divided by 1 fourth would equal 12. Because if you look right here, I have 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths. 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, 8 fourths, 9 fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths, 12 fourths. All right, so that's how many 1 fourth pieces that we have. All right, and you can check with multiplication. Take your quotient, times it by your divisor, and it should equal your dividend, what you started with. So we'd have 12 times 1 fourth equals 12 over 4, which can be simplified down to 3 holes. So we have 12 fourths. So 12 pieces is what he has. And go ahead and turn your page to the back side to look at our top two questions. I went ahead and made fraction bars for you so that way you can visualize what the question is really asking. Read it carefully 
And then look at number two. Your choice is are listed below. Read each one and think which one makes the most sense. And please don't forget to do questions three through six on the back side. And at the top of your page, please put down one for novice, two for apprentice, three for practitioner, or four if you feel like you're an expert in this topic. Okay, we will see you tomorrow in class. Have a great night.